Ooh, if you want, I can turn my fan on if you're still hot. I'm okay. TBH. I can feel it coming out of the ceiling. I mean, yeah, that vent's kind of aggressive, to be, to nice. be perfectly honest. It's what honest. I need. Right, it's while you're sitting over there, and I'm sitting over here. Mm-hmm. That's right. You're sitting by the litter box. I'm sitting by the <laughs> not litter box. In the middle of the room. Yeah, well, you know what? It's clean, so it's not really hurting anybody. Yeah, it's cycled. It's cycled. I clicked the cycle button. It cycled. It cycled. I mean, we don't got a single ass cat in here to, no. to cause problems. If we did, we might be in a different... <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> no, I just saw your reaction to it. <laughs> My throat was like, meh. Is it because of the milkshake? It is. It's the, all that phlegm building. <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me more about your phlegm. Well, it happens when I drink any type of dairy. You had one sip of that milkshake. I actually had more than one sip. I probably had like 10. You've had 10 sips? Yeah. You like it that much? It's really good. Thank you, I I, um, I'm I, a fan of raspberry and I chocolate. Oh, I know you are. I remember that time. What time? With the fucking dessert. In oh, club. yeah, that's right. That's, Everybody thought that was so smart. You were really being, hy- important. You were being hyped up by that wait staff that night. I know. They just wanted a good tip. That's all. No, they seemed <laughs> genuinely shook. <laughs> They're like, nobody has ever done this before. I'm like, why? Wow, you're the smartest person I've ever met, ever. I'm like, chocolate and raspberry go together. Why not have chocolate cake and black raspberry chip ice cream? Sounds pretty tasty to me. It was a good idea. Repping (laughs) graders. I'm just saying, this milkshake caused a lot of stress in my life, but I did it for you. I appreciate that. Do you want to know why? Why? Okay, because I ordered it on Instacart, right? And then I forgot to put it in the freezer for like five hours. The ice cream? Yeah. Oh, geez. I was so like, soup. I was like, oh, fuck. What have I done? And so then I put it in the freezer, but I feel like that fucked it up a little bit, right? Mm, I think it's fine. No, but I mean, like, doesn't that fuck it up a little bit? Eh, it'll be okay. It was just very frozen, and I feel like it was very frozen because it went from, like, liquid back to solid know what i mean it's how science so, works okay cool <laughs> thank you for letting me know how science works i'm just saying it was hard to get the ice cream at out least of the it didn't turn into a gas <laughs> <laughs> which it may <laughs> <laughs> that's true it's dairy it, it is dairy it's so. dairy and you're getting phlegmy so you know me yes i'm a little concerned about that <laughs> <laughs> We're in an enclosed space. We are. There's a reason for me to be concerned. Yep. I, w- I already am. I'll just blame it on the litter box. Okay. We already discussed <laughs> that it's not the litter box. We already talked about uh, this. Well, you know. No. I don't know. So we're going to do this thing? Oh, we're fucking going to do it, bro. Right now? Right now? Right now. Let me, now. Let me take it to the Simba motion. <laughs> I'm ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? I think so. Okay. <clears throat> this would be start it out. This would be the time when our little intro would go beep up right. to welcome to mysteriosities, right? Yeah. That would be how that's gonna go down. Yeah. Okay. Welcome to Mysteriosities. Oh, yeah. We're here. Here we are. And who are you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who I am anymore. Well, I'm Miara. Is that your name? Yeah. It's nice to meet yeah. you. It's very nice I to meet you. I didn't pronounce it wrong, like somebody else we know. I know. It's a really hard name. I know. Everybody pronounces my name wrong, but it doesn't offend me anymore. Well, you know, you got a lot of E's and A's in there. You got yeah. a lot of vowels in that name. It's it's different. But now everyone knows how to say it because you've said it. Me Ara. Me Ara. Let me repeat. Me Ara. I know it's weird. It, it's not that weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're giving the people who can't pronounce it a little bit too much credit. That's fine. It's fine. You're not mad anymore. No. We've moved past it. We moved past it. And I'm Morgan. Oh snap. And no one's ever pronounced it wrong. How does that make you feel? That's crazy to me. 
there's literally no other way to pronounce it i know but i mean like imagining that happening for me it never will no i'm really sorry i've been called so many things Miera, I... mira maria mariah myra shall i keep going i i've gotten myrtle before i've gotten marika <laughs> not marika yeah i think it's because they saw my k initial and just like transposed it into my name they said is that your middle initial or is your name marika <laughs> that's my middle initial mm-hmm. as far as i know i mean i don't know I unless seen something your, changed i haven't seen your birth certificate i'm not sure <laughs> well let me get it out for you you have it here at my apartment no oh probably not that's responsible of you actually yeah i don't have mine here either I may have my social security card, actually. <laughs> That's okay, maybe not, not telling other people that you would be giving them your identity if they robbed you in the street right now. Yeah. So don't mug me, please. Please, please. Please don't please. steal her social security card. If you do, please learn how to pronounce her name I gotta get it changed first. anyway, because I gotta become a Roberts. Um... That's true. Yeah. I didn't know you had to change your social security card. Yeah, you got to change all that shit. That's why I haven't done it yet. Because you're Takes lazy. Ever. Because you're lazy. Okay. So we're... Let's get back on topic here. You're right. We... We're off already. Way off. And we just started. Mm. Mm, uh-oh. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I'm not overly concerned about it, actually. It's fine. Not so much. what are we going to be talking about on this podcast? Well, here's the thing. Lots of things. Weird shit. Conspiracies. True crime. Aliens. Earth oddities. Ghosts. You know, the fun stuff. All, all of that and more that we're probably forgetting about. That some people about. don't even believe in. Yeah. But if you but respond I to do. our Instagram poll and you said no, like one person who <laughs> responded to it and said, no, I don't. <laughs> like. I think then you're in the why wrong are you place. Following us? <laughs> I think you're in the wrong place, my guy. But maybe we'll turn you. But probably not. But maybe could happen. Could happen. Could happen. But how did you get into you know liking all of this stuff? I think that'd be a good place to start. Well, I kind of grew up with it. My mom's always been into weird stuff. Um, hence my name. <laughs> Let's go back Whoa, to that one. Little call back to five minutes ago. <laughs> but like, I've always watched like the weird shows, and she's obsessed with Investigation Discro- Discovery Channel. Oh, ID. ID. So I've watched that. What is it? Kinda. God, that guy. Who? He's like a detective guy that goes out and like solves true crime stuff. He's pretty cool. Oh, watch you- it with my mom. I've never heard of that man. It's it's pretty good. I believe you. But you know, and then like criminal minds and stuff. And I've always believed in ghosts because I've had things happen back when I was a kid. I didn't know that. Yeah. Weird stuff. Do you want to tell me about that right now? We'll get into it in uh, another episode. But I want to know. Stay tuned. <laughs> I want to I wanna stay tuned. Just weird ghostly things that I've seen. Okay, that's fair. Sometimes I can't decide if I believe in ghosts. I guess I'm in the wrong place. I guess so. What are we doing here? <laughs> Let's start another another podcast. The podcast for non-believers <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> no, and I- also there's like um there was this like creepy house that my mom was fascinated that fascinated with that like was close by our house like 20 minutes called Mud House Mansion and there was all of these like weird ghostly stories about it and it was like a dilapidated home it's torn down now sadly but we used to like go out there and like look at it and it just looked spooky i want to compliment you on the choice of the word dilapidated thanks so it made you sound really smart thanks i have a nice vocabulary I, i've seen your wordle <laughs> <laughs> killing the wordle game uh, yeah you are but um did you ever break in or did no. you just you just looked at it from the outside? Just looked at it. I'm not I'm not that adventurous. I broke into a house once. Athens, right? No. 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 Oh Are my you thinking God. about the ridges? Yeah. Um my friend broke into the ridges and I was super jealous about it. That was spooky um, too. It was at night 
and she broke in and she said it was really creepy. She didn't. For anyone who doesn't know, while we're just telling a story with no context, <laughs> is in Athens, Ohio. Uh, you may have heard of it. There's um, a hospital called the Ridges. It had like a TB ward, all sorts of that. Like I think one of the ghost shows did go to it once. Yeah, I think it's a lot of people have. And there was like a woman. And when they were all leaving, and she was, like, missing, I think, right? And then they found her body on the top floor. Mm-hmm. And there's, like, still a mark on the ground from where her body was. And I think if you touch it or something, weird shit's supposed yeah. to happen. And didn't a guy kill himself after he went so. to the ridges? And that's why that dorm room is haunted. Yeah. And I don't Athens think that's... Athens is just haunted in general. Athens it's is... such an old, old town. Athens is the most haunted but My I, dorm room sophomore year was haunted. Was that when were you were on West or East? No, I was on East. Brian Hall. Okay. My freshman dorm room was haunted, maybe, allegedly, if I believe in ghosts. You do. Let's just say you do. But no, yeah, and then the ridges, they tore it down before I could break in. Yeah, it was sad. That was like a big staple there too. Yeah, I don't really know why they tore it down. I don't probably because people people kept sneaking into it and it like, was dangerous. Like I don't know, maybe people were breaking in in the middle of the night and walking right. around in the dark. I'm not sure. Breaking legs and shit. No, I don't know. I mean, probably. Probably. But no. Cutting I'm... themselves on broken glass that I'm sure is in there. Yeah, people were probably playing with the ghosties. Yeah. They said, hey, ghost bro, do you want a beer? And then you're like, yeah. And then they throw a beer bottle and then you cut yourself on it. Yeah. That's exactly how that happened. Yeah. Okay. So what got you into this spooky stuff? So I don't really remember, which is a boring answer, but I will do a little callback to what you were talking about earlier because <laughs> back in the block, I feel like you can really hear my peas and now I I'm know. self-conscious about it. Back in the block, but... <laughs> blockbuster days you know <laughs> throwback to those days of uh walking into a blockbuster and being like what am i gonna watch tonight Sold. hopefully they have it in stock right um we used to go to that horror movie section get all the movies the ring grudge saw saw two <laughs> friday the 13th oh i was super into friday the 13th the original yeah we don't play any games here and I don't know. I think it kind of started from that. And then that kind of segued into like CSI Mm -hmm. and then Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds. Love Um, Criminal Minds. And then, you know, the YouTube world came up and then there was all of those, you know, accounts that like to to, like tell stories and, um, you know, BuzzFeed Unsolved. And then when it didn't morphed into podcasts, you know, here we are. Right. Like, um, do you remember that show on ABC Family? It was like Scariest Places on Earth or something like that. And it was by that little lady who had like the baby voice. And she's actually going to be coming up soon because she is in my topic. Wow. What a segue, huh? Who knew that you were so good at segues? Clever. Mm-hmm. I, did you plan that? No, actually. It just <laughs> popped in my head. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at you. Just being resourceful. Oh, you're just using what you got. <laughs> Her name is Zelda Rubenstein. Zelda Rubenstein. That's yeah. a name. She has like the really high voice. I really don't remember, but I have a really bad memory. It's creepy. Her voice is like eerie talking about that stuff. But you, she has it's perfect. Do you ever like have memories of like T V shows and stuff that like you're not sure existed? Just like weird things that you're like, I'm sure I watched that. And then you can't find it when you look back on try to find it. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of those. Mostly when I was a kid, though, like kids shows. I have that with like a like a show where it was called like fact or fiction or something like that. And they told creepy stories. And then you had to guess whether it was true or not. Interesting. And I don't remember. I don't There's know if I a made game that up. called fact or fiction. No. Like a board game. It was a show. <laughs> but I don't know about the show. It was a very old man. And he told creepy stories and then they got like acted out. And then at the end you were like, and was this fact or fiction? It's like a thousand ways to die. Hmm. Did you watch that? I did watch that. <laughs> Spike. <laughs> <laughs> what a weird show. Yeah, that was, a, that was a really weird show. The stuff on there. I'm like, I don't think some of that was real. <laughs> 
Probably not, but whatever. That show is uh, why I think I have. I always think I have a brain aneurysm that's just going to rupture at any yeah, moment. Yeah, hypo- hypochondriacs or us sponsor us. <laughs> I don't think I'm a hypochondriac. Just well, I know I, I am. Okay. So, <laughs> just, you know, I'll like, just be in the club by myself. Over oh, okay, sorry, I didn't mean to like make you president, vice president, and treasurer of your own <laughs> club. I just, I'm not sure I'm a hypochondriac. I just sometimes think I have a brain aneurysm. It's a little hypochondriac-ish. I just made a word. You can't add "ish" to a word and make it a word. I just did. Okay. Do you want to know what you also just did? What? Took your segue and threw it right I out know, the window. I threw my segue out the window. <laughs> you okay, said, look at this so segue into the topic. Never mind. Let's talk about a thousand ways to die. Let's go back to Zelda Rubenstein. Okay. I'm ready. So the first topic we're going to talk about is the poltergeist curse. Which I am very excited about because I don't think I actually knew there was a poltergeist curse. So like a lot of those scary movies, especially back in the day, mm-hmm. like... This one was in 1982. Okay, so it's that's the original. back in the day. That's back in the day. There's like a remake, I think. There is. I've like, seen it. Yeah. I think I watched it here, actually, at Halloween when you were getting stuff ready. I watched it. Oh, you know what? Yeah, there was a lot of movies on that night. Just yeah. Kind of kept... Yeah, but, it definitely was one of them. But like a lot of those movies had like supposed curses because weird shit happened on the set. So like. I wonder why that is. I don't know. And there's like all of these speculations But for those who don't know, I will read the synopsis of Poltergeist from Wikipedia. Not Wikipedia. Yeah. So, strange and creepy happenings beset an average California family, the Freelings. Steve, which is played by the lovely Craig T. Nelson, if you're a Parenthood fan out there. Zeke Braverman. Did you watch Parenthood? No. No. Damn, that's such a good show. (laughs) Sorry, I didn't mean to disappoint you like that. Anyway, Diane, his wife, which was played by Jo Beth Williams, teenage Dana, Dominique Dunn was the actress, eight-year-old Robbie, and five-year-old Carol Ann, Heather O'Rourke. When ghosts commune with them through the television set, initially friendly and playful, the spirits turn unexpectedly menacing And when Carol Ann goes missing, Steve and Diane turn to a parapsychologist and eventually an exorcist for help. Spooky. I really appreciated that synopsis. Thank you. You're welcome. You want the tagline too? Because I got it. Oh my God, give it to me. From a dimension beyond the living, a terror (laughs) to scare you to death. Damn, have you ever thought about being a voice actor? (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) I just like being extra. I liked it. It was nice. So a lot of weird stuff happened, and the main two things were two weird deaths. Okay. So, like, there was two main deaths of younger people, even. So, like, the one who played Dana, which was the teenage daughter, her name is Dominique Dunn, Mm -hmm. she was murdered. She was 22 years old. Like soon after or during? Not during. it was it was after. Okay. Um, and then Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann, the younger one, the little girl, the one who stares at the TV and goes, "Here, yeah. here." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know. Thank you. But she died after, like, actually during filming Poltergeist Three. Um, of something really crazy. She was only like twelve years old. So I'll start with Dominique Dunn. Um, she died after being choked by her jealous boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. Okay. We went zero to 100 on that one. Right. Isn't that crazy? His name was John Sweeney. Okay. And she was attacked in October, and she actually didn't die from the strangling. She was in a coma for a while, and then they finally decided to pull the plug because she was gone. Damn. I know. So, um, but... He was convicted Mm -hmm. afterwards, and he was only sentenced to six years in prison. But then guess what? What? He only got two years. He only served two years. He got out. Yeah. Two? Two. Two years. 365 days plus 365 days? Exactly. For literally killing somebody? It's crazy. 
And that was after they pulled the plug, right? So she mm-hmm. was dead. It wasn't like she was just in a coma. Yeah. It was like a little over two years, but, you know, close enough. But he was like, the the whole trial was just a farce. All of it. It was just like the, the judge was basically an asshole and just they didn't care. Why are judges either like the best people with like the coolest like closing statements to murderers where they're like you should rot in hell only they're more eloquent than that (laughs) or they're just like maybe you should have like two years for murder just a little taste of jail and then come on out i know they really they really just go on there's no middle ground for judges it's either excellent or what the fuck are you doing and there's nothing in between yeah so this relationship between sweeney and dunn moved pretty fast so they they met and then they dated for a few weeks and moved in together okay and he became basically like a stage five clinger and she was like and he was abusive with her both um physically and emotionally and um she was like i'm done i'm leaving she moved she well she had him move actually and she changed the keys gotta change the keys yeah and um you know where he worked he was a chef under wolfgang puck not our man wolfgang (laughs) puck i'm like what but yeah so and then he started like harassing her like they do as they do. Yep. They Coming do around, do banging on her door, begging her to take him back. And she was worried that something bad was going to happen. But of course. But of course. Nobody, nobody does anything. Nobody did anything. anything. Nobody does anything now. Mm-hmm. And this was what? the Probably the 90s by then? Maybe still the 80s? Yeah. Depending on how soon after? It was they the 80s. Definitely didn't 80. do anything then. 82. When did she- the Poacher Guys come out? 82. Damn, that was the same year? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize it was that soon yeah. after. Yeah. So, um, and they started dating in 81, I think. Okay. But um, anyway, so he was charged with second degree murder, and but the judge ruled there was no evidence of premeditation, so they couldn't charge him with first degree murder. Like, which... Which I kind of get. I mean, because like... It was definitely a crime of passion, right? Right, and so. I watched I watched a TikTok. Um, that was oh, this TikTok. lawyer. Oh, I know. There was this lawyer, and she was explaining, like, kind of in more detail what each of the did differences. Because you know how it's kind of like first degree, second degree, right. voluntary manslaughter, like involuntary manslaughter, felony murder, and you're like, there's so many. What's the difference? Right. How do you keep it straight? Right. And, yeah, I mean, like, first and second, I think most people know it's, like, premeditation of it all. Which, and second is definitely crime of passion. Right, right. To my recollection. Yeah. Um, But he testified that all he remembers is just standing over her body, like, her lifeless body. So, basically, he's saying he blacked out during the whole thing, which I think is kind of a cop-out. Yeah. Like... I mean, I get that that kind of happens sometimes, but, like, I think it's a cop-out. I definitely think it's a cop-out when you consider that he's high-key harassing and stalking her. Right. Right. Like... Like, it didn't just happen. And even if you, quote-unquote, did black out, you didn't black out all the times you went over there pounding on her door and harassing her. Like, you could have just left her alone. Exactly. But you didn't. Yep. So I don't think you can really be like, and then I blacked out and choked her into a coma. No. And Mm -hmm. also considering that they tried to use um, stuff from his ex-girlfriend, who also suffered from his craziness. She was also abused. By him. Tried to, but they didn't let them use Yeah, so the judge struck the testimony from Sweeney's ex-girlfriend. Her name was Lillian Pierce, stating that he sexually assaulted her. And they're like, oh, no, that's not valid. I hate it. It's not valid. When that happens, because I feel like I've read so many uh, or seen so many videos or, like, podcasts or whatever of, like, 
people trying to be like, no, we shouldn't use the testimony of somebody else who can prove that this is how he is. Like, what right. do you mean? That's fully relevant. Well, because they do character statements for people. Like, if you're testifying, like, you know, how good of a person they are. Right. Why can't they do it the opposite way? You should be able to. It's fully relevant. Right. It's because not only relevant. did he sexually assault this girl, but he perforated her eardrum, mm. broke her nose, and collapsed her lung. Yeah. But they said it was prejudicial. But they it's literally that. not. <laughs> I'm mad. They are testifying that he's an asshole. <laughs> he's more than an asshole. He's perforating lungs. Like, <laughs> right. That's not relevant to the person who died because he choked them. Right. Until she literally perished. But it's not relevant. I. They ended up just charging him with manslaughter by the end of it that's it that annoys me which carried a maximum sentence of six and a half years in prison he didn't even get six and a half nope. years he got like a little over two that's some um, bullshit mm-hmm. is he dead now you know he is not he's not dead no uh, I believe it said that he got hired as an executive chef in L.A. Oh, damn. As if nothing ever happened. So he's just vibing in L.A.? Yeah, but then, then the awesome Dunn family, oh, Dominique's mom and dad. Ooh, what do they do? What do they do? They went to that um, business, place of business, mm -hmm. where he was doing his executive chefing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and started handing out flyers about how much of an asshole he was for killing their daughter. Why does that sound kind of familiar? Yeah. So um, so then he had to move away and he changed his name and it said his name is now John Patrick Mara. Well, Not to be confused with Miara. Oh my God. <laughs> We're never going to hear the end of this. Yeah. I like how he changed his whole ass name, probably being like, I'm going to move forward from this, but you still found his name. So it's not. Right. And like I mean, it's, it's secret. I mean, he's still John. Just different. It's not Sweeney. I know, but John's like a really common name. I know, but still. But still, the point is you still found his name, so he didn't even do that. But apparently he's living in Northern California and working at a retirement community for the dining services department. Well, I will say that is a bit of a downgrade <laughs> from being an executive chef in LA. You know if you're working at a retirement home, you like can't salt anything. I was about to say that. <laughs> There's no salt, no seasoning. You gotta be bland as You're cooking all chicken plain. Yep. You're not even putting a little bit of salt on nope. that bad boy. No pepper. No pepper. No paprika. <laughs> no paprika. I'm sorry. I love adding paprika to things. I paprika don't know. Paprika is good. I like paprika on my deviled eggs. Oh, God. Deviled eggs. <laughs> anyway. You're really passionate about deviled eggs. I freaking love deviled eggs. I do I know that about you. <laughs> but um, after everything... um. Lenny Dunn, which was Dominique's mom, she founded Justice for Homicide Victims Adv Advocacy Group. Stop it. They always do such nice and things. And she ran like it that. until she died in 1997. Mm. Um, her dad, Dominic Dunn. Dominic and Dominique. Yeah. I cute. love that. He actually was like a writer for Vanity Fair. Okay. And he wrote a really good piece. You should check it out. I, I didn't include it at all, but. Um, it's really interesting. It was like his perspective on the trial and everything. And it was really sad. That makes me sad. Yeah. So that was Dominique Dunn. Um, <clears throat> now we'll move on to Heather O'Rourke. So little girl, little Carol Ann. Go to the light, Carol Ann. You know. They're here. And, uh, it's been a minute. Cute little blondie. Yeah, with the bangs. With the bangs, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, she died when she was 12. Um, and she actually played Carol Ann in all three of the Portergeist movies. But they actually couldn't finish the third one because that's when she passed away. And the director... I watched this, like, interesting video. Um, and the director was talking about it happening. And they were really close. And he was actually a pallbearer at her funeral. 
Oh no. I know. It was so sad. I don't like that. It makes me But sad. he was like they didn't want to continue with the movie. Right. But the production company or whatever, they're like, you know, you gotta finish this movie because there's so much money invested. And you're like, gotta get my dollar bills back. Right. This is very Hollywood so, of them. They had like a double play her at the end of the movie or whatever, and they just don't show her face the whole time. Yeah. Like once they get her back, you know. And it's just really, he was like, it was really sad because it just felt like they were replacing her and they were close and. Right. But so what happened with her is apparently she contracted GRD, I can't say it. Giardiasis, giardiasis, something like that. I should have looked it up before I said it. How do you spell but, it? I'll show you. But it's giardia. It's like a um, parasite. Giardiasis. <laughs> giardiasis. <clears throat> but it's from a parasite, and um, it's a diarrheal disease that you get like from open water. So like, her family had well water, and they say that's where she got it from. And it just started causing all kinds of complications. And um, the hospital that they went to ended up misdiagnosing her with just Crohn's disease. So mm -hmm. they were treating her for that. And that's not what she had. Right. And um, her, they they were treating her with steroids. So like her cheeks, you can kind of see it in the movies too, like our super chip monkey. And because she was swollen up, you know. Right. And, but anyway, in January of 1988, she started having all of these flu-like symptoms and she ended up collapsing in her home. And so they rushed her to the hospital and her heart stopped. She went into cardiac arrest. Oh, just a little 12-year-old right. baby. And so she ended up, they ended up getting her heart started back up. Good. And they found there at the Children's Hospital of San Diego that she had intestinal stenosis and went into surgery. And, st oh my God, I can't talk. <laughs> but anyway, her, basically her bowel ruptured. Oh. And um, she survived through the surgery, but then she went into cardiac arrest again. And that's when she ended up passing away from septic shock because the toxins got into her bloodstream oh yeah just a little which is baby. like so weird because and so sudden yeah to think about and that so, happening. she was so young so but yeah so if you don't know what intestinal stenosis is which i didn't i had to look it up i do not i do not know what that is it is the complete or partial obstruction of the opening within the colon so okay. The fecal matter was getting into her bloodstream, which caused the septic shock, and she died. And I just feel like you hear about that stuff when people are older because they go through, like, surgeries or whatever, and um, they die from... I mean, you can die from a bowel obstruction. It's crazy. But she was 12. You getting comfy over there? Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to lay down. So, that was Heather O'Rourke, which was super sad. I just feel like it's so sad when it's somebody that young, and it's so... It's like, okay, it's not like it could have been avoided, because, you know, they had a well water. You, people drink well water all the time. You right. You never think that it could, like, cause something like that. Right. So, yeah, that was... Little Heather. Yeah, little Heather. Um, so that was another reason why people thought the show was cursed. Okay, so wait, when did that happen then? You said during the Portrait She died 3? in 1988 during Portrait okay. Grace 3. Okay. Yeah. So then, just some weird happenings throughout the thing. Not anything in specific, but um, the Freeling home in Southern California, which the Freelings are the family, right. if you don't remember. Right, right. Um, it was the uh, where the original film t took place was partially damaged by a fire in Northridge. Oh, okay, fire, got it. There was a fire. And then Jo Beth Williams, who played the mom, mm -hmm. said that every day she would come home from the set and find her pictures on her wall askew. Every day. Not askew. They would just be just 
tilted Not all the, the time. Not the picture's askew. Which, going back to my weird stuff that happened in my dorm, my posters would fall off the wall in our dorm every day. But the only ones that would stay up was our Supernatural poster. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Do you want to know what's really, really funny about you bringing up Supernatural? What? Is that I was going to bring up Supernatural. What? Okay, because you're talking about how weird things happened on set. And I've been watching Supernatural recently again. And there was this one episode that's on a movie set. I don't Mm -hmm. know if you remember that one. And the writer, or I don't remember. It was a mix, I think, of like... The things they were saying were actually, like, real things that they had taken, like, in their research. Oh, like yeah. The, like, the actors acting like actors in the movie. Like, cursed objects. Yeah, they were, like, yeah. using things. And I think that partially had something to do with why there were, like, spirits. I can't fully remember. But it made me wonder if, like, you're saying Poltergeist and, like, other movies and stuff, Mm -hmm. the weird things happen on those sets, too. And I wonder if any of that has to do with stuff like that. Well, it's funny you say that because one of the things that they speculated mm -hmm. was there's this pool scene where um, they're renovating the pool in their backyard and um, the mom falls in and all of these skeletons come out. Those were actually real skeletons that they used. So like people are like skeletons? like real human remains. Who's who has who where are they getting remains that they're like let me just mo- use this in a movie set? <laughs> I don't know. I who don't do I don't work for the movies, belong but, to. Right. But they did. They used real it's human not that remains. It's hard to make fake human remains. Get some plastic. <laughs> have you ever been to a science classroom? Right. There's plenty of those little skeleton men in the world. I know. That's weird. But they used they used real human remains. And people think that it was cursed because of that. Honestly, that's very valid. Right. If that was my Angry remains, spirits. I would curse the fuck out of them for using me in a weird pool scene. <laughs> and she didn't know at first that they were real. You, too. Imagine that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just acting. I'm just acting, and That's I can't crazy. remember the scene. I'm I'm imagining she's in. Is she like in the pool and the remains are like yes. she's in the so remains. So she's like running and she falls into the pool, and then they come. They start coming out because like they haven't fully made the pool yet, so they're. But like ready the to. remains are up but in they, her business, right? Yeah, they're like up in her yeah, business, they come and then up, like behind her and yeah. their real remains. But like the thing is, they got this. They got this house and the they built the house on um a graveyard basically they just moved the stones but they didn't move the bodies so that's what caused all the poltergeist activity in the movie right 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 right, right. so then some other weird stuff will samson who was a creek indian and he was an actual shaman he performed an exorcism on the set of poltergeist 2 to get rid of the in quotes, alien spirits, he called them. Like? Actually. In the movie? No, like real life. No, in real life? Yeah. He real life did an exorcism on the set? Yeah. Interesting. And a year after the movie was released, he died. Oh. Yeah. How? He ended up, I forget, he was like 50-something, though. He died of, like, malnutrition from some type of disease. Oh. At 50, that's like 53 for, i think and malnutrition is not necessarily something you hear right about that often it was some sort of for disease like, and it caused mal- malnutrition but it's crazy it's weird and then um do you remember the scene where the little boy gets choked by the clown yes yeah that freaky ass clown mm-hmm, mm-hmm, it's like the mm-hmm. freakiest part in the whole show People love using clowns. But, um... Poor clowns. It was like an animatronic clown. And when the, um, arm wrapped around his neck, he was actually getting choked by it. It, like, malfunctioned oh, and, no. like, was choking that's this poor kid. That's why you can't kid. trust stuff like that. Right. No, that's just, like, every time you see someone using, like, a, like, a, like, a prop guillotine or, like, a, like, a hangman's noose oh yeah i'm always like well that just seems what if something bad happens like in pirates of the caribbean there's those you know uh, jack sparrow's whole 
head is in a real noose. And I don't know. Every time you see that, and I'm always like, oh no. Something bad's going to happen. You just really can't tell what's going to happen. There's a, ro- a lot of room for mishaps. Um, and then also going back to Zelda Rubenstein. Oh my God. The Kula lady. The lady whose name I don't recognize but do like. So she had. Um, this photo session during Poltergeist 3. Okay. And when they were taking pictures, a shining light kept obstructing her face mm. in one of the photographs. And it, they, she ended up correlating that of her to her mother's death, the time of her mother's death. Interesting. At that exact time, her mother passed away. No. Yeah. What? Yeah. So she thinks that that was her mom. That's wild. Isn't that crazy? Wait, so she thought that that, that was what was happening? Yeah. And it happened? Yeah. So, so like, it was happening. She kept, they kept seeing that light. Right. And they're like, what, what is that? And then she found out her mom passed away and it was right at that time. And she swears that it was her mom. That's, you know, stuff like that happens. Yeah. Makes you a believer. Stuff, yeah. Stuff like that happens all the time. For sure. Like little Orbeez in pictures. Oh, I know you, you had Orbeez in your... Didn't you have Orbeez in your wedding pictures? Yeah, I did. They were One was on me and one was on Cameron. Yeah. I swear. I it was know. my grandma. It probably was. I swear it was. It's like, hey, what's up? And then, this is just speculation, and I think it might just... They might just be saying this to make it creepier than it actually is. That can always be the case. But like that. Um, during the fight with Dunn and her boyfriend, okay, um, she had her friend over at her place when this was happening, and they were arguing outside, and like Dunn and her boyfriend, ex boyfriend, right. who was basically murdering her. But her friend that was inside was hearing them argue, and apparently. The soundtrack for Poltergeist was playing Just randomly. For fun? I guess. I don't know. Like, wait, what? I know. And they said that he kind of turned it up to drown out the sound of them fighting. Oh, I don't like that. Yeah. Mm-mm, mm-mm. And then he found her dead. Well, not dead, but comatose. Right, because he right. blacked out. <laughs> Quote, unquote. Yeah. Turned up, turned up the Poltergeist soundtrack blacked out and right. then choked her hmm. and then during the making of poltergeist 3 a parking garage set was completely engulfed in flames just randomly they don't know how it started a parking garage yeah can concrete even burn i don't know I don't... <laughs> but that's what happened completely engulfed in flame i just feel like you think about what parking garages are made of and i mean anything can catch fire right I, I guess so. Because there's other stuff. It's not just concrete. Okay. But, um, and everybody was hurt except for one crew member. Crazy. Ev- everybody was hurt? Yeah. I mean, they didn't die. I mean, yeah, but But still, they were hurt. It's just still. On the crew. And then this one is really freaking crazy. Uh-oh. <laughs> like, really Uh-oh, crazy. Oh, your eyes just got weird. So, um, Richard Lawson... He played a parapsychologist, Dr. Ryan Mitchell. So he was in a plane crash a decade after the movie. Okay? I don't like plane crashes. Mm -hmm. I don't like plane crashes. So 27 of the 51 passengers died from that plane crash. That's like decent odds. He lived. That's decent odds. He lived because... He was listening to the Poltergeist soundtrack. (laughs) No. No. That would be wild, though. (laughs) <laughs> it would be so wild. He was upgraded to a first class seat after giving his autograph. Later found out that the passenger who was in his original died. seat was the one was one of the passengers no. that died. So he no. was meant to be in that seat that that passenger died. Oh, stuff like that makes me sad. Isn't though. that crazy? But it makes you think too much about your like day to day. I know. And like the choices that you make. Like right. if you like walk onto a bus and you're like, oh, do I want to sit in the front or the back? And you're like, you sit in the front and then you get rear ended and all the people in Why the back. I don't know. You know what I mean? Just stuff yeah. like that where you're just thinking about 
like, oh, do I want to sit in the front of the restaurant or the back of the restaurant? And then there's a fire in the kitchen. I don't know. You just like makes you think too much about like, oh, do I want to go out to dinner with my friends or do I want to blow them off and sit on the couch? Do I just want to be a hermit? Yeah, but then and but then a plane crashes into your living room <laughs> and you die. <laughs> you should have gone out to dinner. Uh, like, bad decisions. You know what I mean? Oh, it just makes you think about your decisions too much. It freaks me out. And then author James Kahn, who was novelizing the movie, he had a lightning bolt strike his building as he was finishing up the project. Not a lightning bolt. Uh Uh-huh. And the front of his air conditioner blew across the room and struck him in the back. Isn't that bizarre? That's just like I was just saying. Like, what if his friends were like, hey, do you want to go out to dinner? And he's like, like, nah. No, no, I think I'm going to stay in. They get struck by an air conditioning. Like, oh, you should have gone to get sushi, I guess. (laughs) Now you're dead. Not that we're making fun of this no, <laughs> poor man, but, but I, yeah, but no. stuff like that and choices. It's just mm, no, that's horrible. <clears throat> yeah, and then after that happened, his lights came back on and his video games turned on and started playing by themselves. I swear to God, I thought you were about to say the Poetry Guy soundtrack started playing, and I was about to <laughs> lose the my shit. This I was like, okay, this movie's cursed. <laughs> it's cursed. It's over. That's just the there's, theme through there's the whole There's no ifs, whole ands. Thing. No one ever watched this movie again. <laughs> Nobody listened to the soundtrack. Take it off of Spotify. <laughs> it's just all the <laughs> the soundtrack just causes everything. No, I really want. It's was, not even the movie. It's, I was so it's confident that you were about to say that. I was like, this is not okay with me. <laughs> I don't even like that we're talking about this anymore. Um, so then, <clears throat> director Gil Keenan stated, this is a direct quote, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The house that I rented during filming was straight up legit haunted by a female spirit dressed in black, and I became aware of her within the first few days of staying in the house. That's straight up legit. And only after I left did I receive a call from the previous owner who had moved back in who was terrified by the goings on in the house and wanted to see if I had experienced any of it. She definitely was there. It didn't follow me back to Los Angeles, but it followed me from set back to where I was sleeping during filming. Creepy ass lady. A creepy ass lady. (laughs) Are you looking... We do not own the rights to this music. I'm just kidding. I won't play any more of this. I don't want Listen, I'm kind of scared because maybe it is cursed and saying, we're going to die now. No, 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 no. It, it hadn't made any callbacks. The only time that actually happened was when that horrible fucking man was blacking out. The other times were just me thinking that it was going to be the soundtrack and it <laughs> That's wasn't. True. That's so true. I, I don't actually think it's Fair. cursed. Fair. It's fine. But, um,. Yeah, so that's the curse of the poltergeist. Mm. Weird, weird happenings. That's on. it? That's all we got? Yeah. You finished your notes? I did. Look at that. All your notes just skewing about. I know. Strewn about. St- <laughs> skewing <laughs> Whatever about. Whatever that word may be, I don't know. <laughs> not on Wordle. Hmm. No, no. It's not a Wordle word. Strewn. S-T-R-E-W-N. Strewn. That's S-T-R- a Wordle word. S-T-R- no, it's not. Is that six letters? Oh yeah, I can't. Count. I mean, there's so many, there's so many words when I'm trying to wordle. I'm the six, dumb one. There's six letters, and I'm like, oh, you'd be a good wordle word. I type it in. I'm like, nope, that doesn't work. It's me, Miara, the dumb co-host. Okay, you're not dumb just because you don't know how many letters are in the word just strewn. Can't count. I'm the one that said screw. I spelled it. You did. So I know how to spell. I just can't count. You counted fine. You just needed a minute. <laughs> All right. Stop so. calling yourself dumb. <laughs> I'm so smart. You're so smart, Miara. So smart. You are the smartest person I know. Yeah. Ask anybody. All right. So we're going to do our shout out. Oh, my God. You literally read my mind. First of all, we'd like to thank Cameron, who is my husband. And Morgan's brother. Unfortunately for me. Who Just kidding. let us use his micro center discount to get our supplies. <laughs> oh my god, are we allowed to say that? Yeah. Mm. 
Yeah. And well, we, he uh, actually bought them. We uh, went into Micro Center and got <laughs> transported into 1999. Yeah. No offense to Micro Centers <laughs> everywhere, but your your looks a little outdated. <laughs> we were in there talking about how we wanted to be at Best Buy. It's true. And I stand by that statement. I could hang out in a Best Buy all day. My God. I could hang out by the refrigerators and the, <laughs> and the, and the washing machines and have a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Not in a micro center. It's true. They did have good movies playing, though. They had that going for them, and they had nothing else. It's true. And also, Alex Serenatus. He's our producer, kind of. Sound check guy. He does. Good he with does, all the technical support. Sometimes he does things, and I'm like, I don't really know what you're doing, but you know. <laughs> Because we're not the most technical people. I'm not not technical, but I'm not technical at the same time. I'm really not technical. Well, I know that about you. I mean, I can figure stuff out, but I'm not that good at it. I'm surprised you put your headphones on the right way. You know, fair. (laughs) (laughs) Fair. That's a fair. Because they fold in weird. Okay, I was joking. No, I'm I was joking. Listen. That was a joke. (laughs) Legit. Oh, my God. They fold weird, and I was like, how does this work? (laughs) That you is were, you were genuinely story. like, oh, these headphones are outsmarting me right now. It's true. Well, it's you true. you wore them. You're wearing them. They're I on. Am. They're on. I'm proud of you for that. I know. I'm, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> you know? I'm proud of myself. That's all we need. And then we're going to rep the So We Gaming podcast mm-hmm. because, you know, they're our, I guess, partner podcast because Alex is one of the co-hosts of that show and he's been repping us like crazy, so... Shout out to So We Gaming. Yeah, very much fun if you like go gaming. Uh, <laughs> Even if you aren't a gamer. I mean, which you're not. You're I'm not, not a gamer. You listen to it. I do really enjoy listening to it. I think it's interesting and it's funny. They're, that's, they're, they're, they got a good banter going. Sometimes, like, that's the best way kind of to get into topics that you're, or like hobbies or I've whatever that you're too. not really necessarily interested in is... Yeah. Listening to other people talking about it. Yeah, that was really interesting. Gets you into the vibe of it all. Mm -hmm. So who are our shout outs for Instagram? First of all, I just want to say we really do appreciate everybody who's followed us on all of our social media pages. We do have a Twitter, a Facebook, an Instagram. I don't really remember how to use Facebook anymore. So I would definitely recommend if you're going to look for us anywhere. Look for us on the Instagram. Look for us on the gram. We're there. And I posted on our Instagram story yesterday. Just, you know, we're recording tomorrow. Who wants a shout out? And we got a couple. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do them right now. Um, we got my stepsister. I mean, Miara's stepsister-in-law. I mean, if, if you want to <laughs> add an in-law to it. I yeah. Mean, you know, we got Danny. She said, me, me, me. Which, I mean, I wanted people to, like, write a message, not just me, me, me. But... <laughs> You know, I wasn't clear on the instructions, so I can't really, I can't really be mad about that. So, hello, you know, little, little Danny in the house. Hello, Danny. Danny's Thanks been, for supporting us. She's been very helpful. She has uh, commented several suggestions for topics. Oh, yes. And we are always open to suggestions because it's always nice learning about something we've never heard about. Which has happened already. Yeah. We got a couple suggestions where i was like i not i don't know what that is i've yep. never heard of that before and it's interesting um and then we have another i'm sorry i got literally distracted looking at another page on the instagram we got lisa is that yeah that's, that's my aunt that's your aunt she yep. said you know good luck we'll definitely be listening and i hope that you do yay and you will hear about it you're I'll let you in. know when we release. It will well, be... you actually know because you're hearing yeah. it now. <laughs> if you're listening to this, we've released. <laughs> the podcast has entered the internet if you're literally listening to this right now. Yep, that's right. Uh, and then the final little shout out is my friend Hirsch from London. He just replied, yes. <laughs> Um, And earlier when I was judging the one person who said he did not believe in ghosts, that was Hirsch. So, you know. We're going to change your mind, Hirsch. Baby, you're in the wrong place. but (laughs) We're we're, going to change his mind. We're happy to have you here. Yeah. Even if you don't believe. Oh, and also, 
I totally forgot this, and this is one of the most important shout outs. Oh, who? What? Blair. Oh my god, Blair baby. Our love Blair created our beautiful logo that we are so obsessed with. She yes. did such a great job. I am she... so proud of her. And she just killed it. So big shout out to Blair. She did so well. I sent her a funny little scribble of a martini glass and some olives and some words. And she turned that funny little scribble into a very beautiful logo. Love and very it. relevant. Looking at it right now. Um, it's got a little alien, a little alien olive son. So cute. He's so cute. our son. I love him more than anything. Yes. We need to come up with a name for him. He does deserve a name, doesn't he? We'll have to think about that. Yeah. I don't think I can come up with it on command right now. We'll take suggestions for our little alien, too little alien friend's name i will say also um the reason that it is a martini glass is because we will be enjoying beverages every time we record yes um, we didn't say it earlier but i made milkshakes today they're black raspberry chip i guess we did kind of talk about that shout a little out bit to earlier. graders <laughs> so we will be enjoying like little beverages probably more fancy than this but i didn't feel like going to the store and the only liquor i had in my freezer was parrot bay so we no just, to the alcohol today. We just enjoyed a milkshake today instead. But so all of the stupid comments I made today, sober. totally sober. Stone cold totally sober. Totally sober. Can't even, uh, can't even <laughs> blame that one on the alcohol. No, I should have, though. I should have pretended. Like I blacked out. <laughs> oh. Let's go with that. Blacked I blacked out. out or I'm, I'm going to do a cop out. I blacked Fucking out. Cop. I don't know what I said. Cop out, sir. You yeah. murdered a woman. Anyways, we will... Yes, we will be enjoying beverages. That is why it is a martini glass with a little alien baby. Um, <laughs> so we'll probably mention that at the beginning as opposed to the end. But yeah. since we were talking about the logo, I thought I would bring it up again. Yeah. So thanks, everybody, for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. This was our first time. Yes, it was. So please forgive us. Because we do have anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I am medicated for it. <laughs> yes. Doesn't always work as much as I want it to. <laughs> we, we do have an emotional support pillow that we I have do. been hogging this entire time. It's very soft. It's very soft. But, I call uh, him Kirby yes, because she, he's pink and cute. Yes, she did name him. I accept that. Yeah. So thanks for listening. And yeah. we are... Okay, well, before you try to do the little... Before you try to do the little, and we are. Okay. How does it, please, um, follow us on the social oh, yeah. media as we talked about before. Um, Mysteriosities, it's the same across all socials. Um, kind of a hard word to spell. Just go with your gut and you'll spell it right. I believe in you. I believe in your ability to do it. It took me a long time to spell it right. If I can spell strewn, <laughs> you, you can, can spell sp Mysteriosities. Yes, we do believe in you. So now do you want to do do the thing? Thanks for listening. We are Mysteriosities. Mysteriosities.